Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's lesson, which is going to take using Google Sheets to the next level. Uh, we are going to take the budget we've created using a rudimentary uh, Google Sheets spreadsheet, and we are going to take this information and plug it into a pre-formatted Google Sheets presentation. So what you are looking at now is the budget I created using Google Sheets from a previous lesson. And this will be the beginning of a new lesson where we're going to take the information you see here and we are going to place it into this template. So you click the monthly budget at the top and we're going to take all the information from this budget and we are going to move it to this budget right here. So the very first thing we're going to do is make sure our categories match up. So I've got paycheck and child support as my income categories. So uh, here they have savings, paycheck, and we're going to go ahead and call this child support right here. And I'll put an other category just in case you have uh, other forms of income that aren't listed. Uh, if you have two parents, you would have paycheck parent one, paycheck parent two, uh, that kind of thing. And then we will not need that other. And we will not need that other. So I'm deleting both of these rows. Delete row. Boom. So my income, and this already does it for you automatically, uh, these, the equations are built in, um, these add up automatically. Uh, you also notice at the top it has a starting balance. So in other words, how much money do you have left over that you are carrying forward from one month to the next that you're not putting into savings? So I'm going to say my starting balance is $153 and 23 cents. Quite honestly, I'm just making that number up. But there it is. I put it in. Uh, ignore these numbers right now. These numbers are meaningless until we enter all the numbers in our budget. But once we do enter all the numbers in our budget, these numbers will become extremely meaningful uh, and important. So we still have our income and our expenses. Um, savings. It uh, just so happens that I have $121.43 in my savings. I'm going to go ahead and throw that. Actually, I planned for $45, and I ended up with $121.43, so I'm just going to transfer those numbers over. Planned savings, $45. Actual, $121.43. I already got that. Yeah, I don't want that shown again, so I'm going to click OK on that. So the next thing I've got is my paycheck. I have $2,040 as my budget. Enter that. My actual, the money I actually made as opposed to what I planned to make was $2,225.36. So if you take your budget and add this, you'll be fine. Now, um, now remember, I am a mother, a single mother of two, so I get child support. I'm not actually a single mother of two, but this budget is based as though you are a single mother uh, with two children. So $300 per kid, $600 of child support. Let's say we have a responsible ex. They're paying it. Life is good. Okay. And then the other thing I would say here is that uh, my other, like say you get uh, a birthday check from Aunt Betty and, and Aunt Betty sends you uh, money for your birthday, hey, that goes in your other category. So I didn't plan on it, but I got it. it means I got $50. Yay me. Okay. So now I have my income categories all done. 600 plus 2040 plus 45 equals 2,685. And then 600 plus 50 plus 2,225 plus 121 equals 2,997. So I've actually got made $312 more than I expected to. That, that's pretty good. That's, that's going out to dinner a couple times or maybe having a nice weekend away. 
So now I'm going to make these categories match up with reality. So I've got rent, mortgage, car payment, insurance. So rent, mortgage, mortgage. And mortgage is your house payment. That's what mortgage means if you didn't know that. Car payment. I said insurance. All forms of insurance. Uh, electricity, cell phone, internet. And again, your parents might have different bills, and I want those bills to match up with what your bills actually are. So have those conversations. Cable TV, gas, groceries. And we're going to go clothing, entertainment, credit cards. And you notice they've got savings up here. So at the bottom of my budget, I have savings. But I'm not going to worry about that because they've got savings right there. So now I've got my um, categories equaling out to what I had in my original budget. So this budget's are going to do basically the same thing, but because it's pre-formatted nicely, um, it's going to give me some cool visuals, including um, start balance, end balance, expenses planned versus actual. That's how much money you s plan to spend how, versus how much money you actually spend. How much money you plan to make versus how much money you actually make. This, this, this is real world stuff, kids. So now I'm going to go and plug in my actual numbers here. So rent and mortgage, um, 900 and 900, those are the same. So I'm going to enter my $900 here, enter my $900 here. Notice they've built the equations for you, so you're going to see all the bar graphs and everything change as you enter your numbers. So I just made my normal payment and that would be a rent payment. My car payment. I planned on making a $150 car payment. I decided to go big this month and spend $50 extra on my car payment. That minus 50 means I spent an extra 50 bucks. Um, which since that's a debt is a good thing because that means I own slightly more of my car. Uh, insurance, 100 bucks. It's actually pretty low for insurance. Now I am assuming that this person gets health insurance through their work because if they didn't that insurance payment would be much higher. Um, like as a teacher I get my health insurance through my work but some people have to buy their health insurance individually which means that is what we call an out-of-pocket expense. Electricity, I planned on sixty dollars it ended up being forty five thirty four so I planned on sixty it ended up being $45.34. Okay. Notice how it is rounding. It is taking off the pennies here. Uh, in the budget I had you do, I did not take off the pennies, but this is pre-formatted. It's doing all of that for you. Cell phone, $190. It ended up being $192.46. $192.46. One ninety-two forty-six. Again, it is the rounding, so I was off by two dollars. You'll notice the difference there was positive fifteen dollars. I spent fifteen dollars less than I planned, so that's a positive difference. Seeing the way that works, so internet seventy-five dollars, seventy-five twenty-three. That's probably going to come out as even on this one, but I'm going to enter my seventy-five twenty-three anyway, and notice that came out as a negative nothing. Okay. So next is cable TV, 100 versus 95, 95. 100 versus 95 dollars and 95 cents. Boom, four dollar difference. Gas, how, gas for my car. No, actually this is, yeah, this is gas for my car. I planned on 120 bucks, it was 98.65. So notice the difference of $21 there. And notice how these numbers at the top are shifting. Okay. Uh, next on my list, groceries, 500 is what I planned. 
I had a rough month. I bought some food, maybe through a party. I spent $625 on groceries. It means I'm down 125 bucks. Uh, next on my list, clothing. I budgeted for 100 bucks. I only spent $45.65. Bought a pair of jeans and a t-shirt, apparently. So there we go. I'm in the plus 54 there. Entertainment. I planned on 150 bucks. I spent 175.65. Spent 175 dollars and 65 cents. I am in the negative 26 dollars there. And then my credit cards. How much did I pay down my credit cards? I planned on 150. I spent 150. So let's throw that in. All right. So now let's go. Now my numbers are real here. So I planned to spend $2,595, and I planned to earn $2,685. The difference between those two is that this my planned income was $90 higher than my planned expenditures. So theoretically, I was planning to put $90 into savings, okay? Actually, I made $2,997, which was $312 more than this $2,685. So that's good. And I planned to spend $2,704. So I actually planned, I actually spent more than I planned to make. That wouldn't have been good, but since what I actually made was higher, this ended up all right. Um, so I actually spent $109 more than I planned to. That's why it's a negative, and that's why it's in red. Because when you're, when it's bad, when it's more than you expected, it goes red. That's why we make the phrase, you're in the red. So the good news is that I made, uh, looks like $294 more than I spent. So that's why it says right here, $293 saved this month, meaning my increase in total savings is 191% because I came in with a savings of $121. And if you add $293 on top of that $121, that is actually an increase of 191%. That is not too shabby, folks, uh, and that's what you want. Um, and here you can actually change the title. So I'm going to go on Mr. Blumendahl's monthly budget. Um, and you can see how things flush out there. So not too difficult. I didn't actually fill my box. Let's see if I can stretch that. Can I stretch that? Nope, nope, nope. Undo. That's where the undo button is great. Uh, it's not going to let me, so I'm going to go ahead and undo, retyping it, and just go back to monthly budget. So, starting balance is what you come into the month with. Uh, I started with $153. I'm ending with $446. So when I do my budget for the following month, this $446 is going to go up here where it says starting balance. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you have an explanation for how to convert this budget that you've already made into this budget. It's a little bit easier. It's using a pre-formatted um, form for you, but it's also extremely useful. And hopefully you find it so. Whether you do or don't doesn't matter because honestly, ladies and gentlemen, it's an expectation in this class. And with that, this is Mr. Blumendahl once again signing off until our next lesson in computer literacy class.